so much of expectations. It's my belief that your expectations shall not be cut off in Jesus' name. As we begin to round up, and most of those things like yesterday night, so many promises quoted in the Bible, as well, what we call positional promises. You know them. But when you experience them, it becomes experiential. And that's what I'm believing that will happen to your life tonight in the name of Jesus. That there will be a tremendous release of God's power in your life. That there will be a creative miracle. I don't know whether you survive on drugs before you come here. You have, but tonight, the Lord will heal you. I don't know whether as a missionary or a pastor, uh, all the economic issue is affecting you. And to move forward has become difficult, like some pastors ask questions. I'm trusting that tonight, God will take your finances uh, beyond the secular into the spiritual in the name of Jesus. Every limitation shall be removed. Because Jesus Christ could not be limited. In fact, in the book of Psalms, God has an issue with the Israelite. He said, they limited me, the holy God. He was accusing his children that he was limited. And so every limitation, the power of Jehovah God will remove in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's a parting shot. It's a message that will turn your life, your ministry around, I believe. As I just want us to celebrate the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Every day was down. Every song confess. Oh, yes. The day. Jesus, you are Lord, you are Lord. Well, lift up the blood stain and burn up his skin. You are Lord, amen. You are raising from the dead. You are Lord, every Savior, everything. Every thought. You are Lord, you are Lord, and simple color. So Lord, you are exalted, you are glorified, you are magnified. I just pray that you will make the difference in the life of your people tonight. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Lord bless you. Go back to where it's been read so much.
And that's Matthew chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 28. We have read the Bible so much that you expect that it will be worn out, but it can never get worn out because it's the word of life. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and, earth, and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Let me say that already the disciple knew that power belonged to Jesus. So, it doesn't necessarily need to announce to them again. But this time, he was announcing, delegating them with such power. And as you are hearing, I believe that it will come to your heart that you are receiving the same power in the name of Jesus. He said, all power. And you need power to do anything in life. The reason why you eat is it may release power to your body. Because if you don't eat for days, you feel weak. The reason why you buy gasoline or petrol into your car is that it may go into the combustion chamber and release the power to push your car. The moment your petrol reaches zero level, what happened? The car just grind to a halt. And so Jesus was releasing power to the disciple, and I believe that the revelation of the same power will come to you as we speak tonight in the name of Jesus. All power, both in heaven and in earth. It amazes me when believers cring and say, we saw a snake in our house. Somebody sent snake to me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there is a bird knocking at my window and I can't sleep. I begin to wonder. Do you believe the Bible? But it does happen and you can't blame anyone. It depends on the level of revelation that you have. But I'm trusting that the almighty God will lift somebody above that in the name of Jesus. All power, both in heaven and earth, has been given unto me. And then, the subject change. Go ye therefore. All power, he was talking about himself, then the subject turned to them. So he was announcing the power Assuring them that I'm delegating you with this power so that you go, can go. And that word, go, has been so much emphasized. Go. So if you are not going, the power is not available. As simple as ABC. Because what will you do, what will you do with, with the power? So to experience the power needs that you go. And if you are going to go, you must be trained. Because if you are not trained, you are likely not to go where. If you are going to travel anywhere, you need a little bit of education. 
For instance, if I want to go to Kaduna from Ibadan, I won't just assume that I know a garage and so I just wake up one morning and I face Iwo Road and I enter a vehicle and I say, I'm going to Kaduna. I need to ask somebody, if I've never been there, please, where and how will I get to where to take a vehicle going to Kaduna? If you are going to travel overseas, you need to ask questions. Oh, praise God. Somebody was going to travel by plane one day. A pack load put inside Danfo and travel to Mutala Mohammed Airport. <laughs> praise God. Because he assumed that, of course, he can pay for the goods. So by the time he brought the first box, and they say, I oh got this one. As past 23 kg, you have to remove something out of it. He was wondering what happened to the one. Praise God. I'm talking, I'm telling you about a life issue. I know because that's what happened to us Christians. I was there. But if I told him that this thing wouldn't go, I would say I believe God. We talk, God, all things are. Because that's what we normally say. But when we don't want to subject ourselves to training, because training requires humility we are not willing to be humble and it has to do with where we put God in our life we know that for our son to be a medical doctor he has to go through Six years in the primary school, probably with extra coaching, so that I could come up top and go to a good secondary school and then use, I don't know how many years, well, I think maybe six years now, uh, because in my own time I use five. I don't know how, how many they use now, but at least they will, you will use another five. And uh, then if it is the UK, you use five, then you use two, another two. Making seven, seven plus six, that's 13. Then you then go to medical school for about six years. 13 plus six, 19. 19, 20 solid years to prepare for that person to be released to be a medical doctor. If it's a lawyer, probably a little bit less. Okay? And if he's going to go higher, he will go do masters, he will go do PhD. And today we have multi dimensional discipline. Some people, after their PhD, they still go do another two masters so that they can be good in two or three disciplines. We do that in the secular world. But when it comes to the things of God, the moment we get born again, you say, I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. I can take everything. Praise God. It's good to go to the mountain and pray and get power. <laughs> now, so it be. You know, it's not that simple. Go and ask men that God has used. They were humble. They subjected themselves to training. You just hear name, big name outside. You say, no, uh, he just got converted. Uh, he was a lecturer. You don't know the private time that man are taking to enlist to some theological school that you don't know. <laughs> I don't know how many journey they have taken to attend seminars and they have learned from other people. You don't know how many men of God that they can link and they have written and I send them a lot of materials that they have personally studied. 
Because many of them, they are serious-minded people. And sometimes, serious-minded people, they don't go to formal education, i.e., Many of you have read about Afe Babalola. Afe Babalola didn't go through formal education. <laughs> Do you understand? But he's a son. Well educated. He went through correspondence. What I mean is he didn't go to primary school to enroll. He didn't go to secondary school to enroll. He didn't go to university to enroll. But the man is well learned. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, many men of God that we see that God is using, they have disciplined themselves, they have used their time, they have had training. Train their spirit, train their soul, train their emotion, train their body. Like Paul, like Paul said, I subject my body. And so we, we need to train to be effective. And training, like I said, requires humility. There are some people, they don't, they are not trained. They will just go from PFM to Cannes, from Cannes to, I don't know how many associations we have now. Praise God. When we are doing mission mobilization, sometimes we get to one state, they will say this one is good news, that one is can. That, uh, those things are good, though. I'm not despairing. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? But that's the kind of thing some people do. There's no personal training. But I'm trusting that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Impacting global mission through training. I'm going to pray tonight that God will release the power to get the gold and the silver for your ministry. Amen. But men that God has used to raise friends and fun, they are going train to train through training. They are going through what? Through training. To be an effective pastor, there are training, sharpening your skill for interpersonal relationship. It's a global training body. Sharpening your skills. You need to sharpen it. To be effective in interpersonal relationship. You have heard it said a lot of times, in messages, your attitude will determine what? Your altitude. What are they saying? Train your interpersonal skill. Because God has brought someone that will be a blessing to someone. And by his rude attitude, he has given away who God wants, who God has sent to bless him. I remember a man of God, a notable one. Said one day, he just prayed. And he thought to bless a family. And put what he has in blessing to that family and off he went. And when he got to the house of the family, he knocked, they delayed a little bit. Eventually they opened and they sat him down. No hospitality. Nothing whatsoever. So eventually he just sat down waited some women, so in his mind he thought, these people, they don't deserve my gift. So, eventually he stood up, and bye-bye, bye-bye. Maybe I miss you. So he went to another family. <laughs> when he got to that another family, that one entertained him, so he gave the gift to that family. Because you cannot determine your background, how you are born, how you are brought up, but you can determine your future. Praise God. And you can't be smarter than the environment 
where you grew up from. And so even if you are not exposed to nice attitude, you can cultivate it. Like a ground that a farmer cultivates. You can cultivate your heart through training. And you get better. And all this that you may impact the world with the gospel. Because you can't reduce the gospel. Yesterday we were told about the message and all those stuff. The content of the gospel is different from the carry of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God. Unto what? Unto salvation. That's the gospel. That's the message that we bear. But the packaging, the person that is bearing the gospel may whittle down the power of the gospel. And I'm going to give you an example. As a young boy, I took ill and I was asked to go to a clinic. And so when I got to the clinic and the doctor attended to me and as the doctor was attending to me, <laughs> so he prescribed the drug to me. When I took the drug, I didn't get well because in my inner being, I believe that this doctor smoking and drinking. <laughs> I don't know whether he has prescribed wrong drug for me. So I was taken to another doctor, a nice, good doctor. He prescribed another drug for me, and I took that one and I got well. Eventually, I look, it is the same drug. But psychologically, the person that prescribed the first drug, are you going to say? And then grown up, I have a friend. He graduated in UCH and was in the staff medical clinic. But he happens to be a friend. Very reckless. So one day, my hand knew him very well. Incidentally, I didn't get converted early like most of you. So uh, he was my friend and we were doing it together. So my aunt knew him very well. So he took a daughter to UCH because she works at UCH. And so in the staff clinic, he met Aki. And so Aki just take in and prescribed his work for her. So Aki took a leave from his seat and went somewhere else. When he was coming back, he saw my aunt as taking her daughter to see another doctor. So he came jokingly. He said, boy, you know what happened today? Was <laughs> because, you know, this is, is the same prescription. Very sound. But the packaging was wrong. And so it can't be effective. And it can't go far in life. And that's why you said they can sell a rubbish product, well packaged, and you may not be able to sell a good product, not well packaged. I'm still emphasizing the issue of training. Why do you need training? To be an effective package. So that your gospel may be accepted. And when your gospel is accepted, when God bless your gospel, people will bless you in return. Have you ever, as a believer, had some believers said, I mean, no, let me put it this way. Do, do you know that some believers, they go to some prophets because the prophets are very accurate, but they cannot attend their church. Do you know? Eh? What's, what's the problem? 
Yeah. Because they don't, they just want the grace of God from that man, but they don't want his person. Is God using the man? Yes. Anointed. But the area of his life that need to sharpen, to train, is not humble enough to yield himself to be trained by God. So for us to impact the world with the gospel, we need to go through training. We need to get ourselves into the mode of prayer. We need to intercede. Having said that, turn your Bible with me to the book of John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And I read from verse 21 to 23, please. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. As my Father has sent me, so even so send I you. As God has sent me, I am sending you with same power. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever see ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever see ye return, they are retained. My, oh my. Do we carry ourselves in that, with that faculty? That as God sent Jesus, and Jesus well represented the kingdom of heaven. Because we see Jesus, he said, I do nothing except my father has told me. Absolutely dependent and reliant on God. And say, here he said, he breathed the Holy Spirit on them, which is God inside of us. Which is abundant supply of the spirit of Christ Jesus. And so God come to indwell us. But if we must retain God. We have to learn the art of intercession. Intercession come as a result of compassion. That's what drives a missionary to pray. To go to a mission field. If you don't intercede, you can't go far. I was leading a team to Guinea Bissau one year, and I have inside my team, I think Professor Abayomi, um, who then was the head of the Department of Economics at uh, and so when we got to a place in Senegal and we need to enter into a boat that will carry us over he said brother Guega <laughs> I've been doing ministry and he has a church in Ife he has a ministry to the youth which numbers up to 2,000 every year he gather at Camp Young at the so it's not a small man in the ministry. He said, if you are leading me to Bissau, which is the capital of Guinea-Bissau, I would have known. But how did your missionary, how did you know that there is a place called Farim in this hinterland, in Guinea-Bissau? Because there is no Farim on the map. <laughs> Praise God. So, I look at the map of Guinea-Bissau. I can't find Farim. I can find Bissau and the major city. So how did he get to know? I said that's the place of intercession. Praise God. He was, he was praying, God use me. God send me. God use me. God send me. And then Backtrack. Our fathers in the Lord. Pa Elton and 
Another person that I forgot his name has standard the Church of Pentecost in Ghana. God sent them. They haven't been to Africa all their life. But God said, go to Elisha. I don't know whether his piety or the other man went and bought a dog and wrote the name. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> At the neck of the dog. So that one day, one day, I will get there. How did God reveal Elisha to a Elton in the United Kingdom? It's born out of intercession. Intercession locks you up with God. Because that's the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After a reason, he ascended to the heavens of heaven and he seated on the right hand of the Almighty God. Do what? Interceding for you and I. That's his ministry. And that's what he has called us into. So, as the Father has sent me, so send I you in the place of intercession. May God give us the body of intercession in the name of Jesus. Intercession go beyond prayers. And that itself we will get into as we yield ourselves to be trained. Fortunately, today we have one hundred and way, way, we have one hundred and one ways of praying to kill your enemy, and that's appeal to us. In fact, it's so it pains someone's eyes that when you go to a conference now, the kind of book that people rush to buy, you don't see those books that we read in those days. Why revival tarries? People don't get those kind of books to read again today. So it's 1,001 1, 1, way to get married. Why will you have to pray 1,001 way before you know God's people who to marry? Because you are not doing the will of God. So it becomes difficult for God to speak to your heart. Why is it difficult for people to hear God's talk? If you are coming home and you are at that gate and you are greeting a friend in a loud pitch of tune, when your children hear your voice, they will know mommy has come. They can distinct their mommy's voice from other voices. Why? Because of relationship. And so when we are not cultivating intimacy with God, then at our own point of need, it becomes, it becomes difficult for us to design God's voice. Because when he was knocking, for us to hear his voice, we are not willing to hear his voice. We want to hear other voices then. And when now we have needs, now we are coming to him and say, God, talk to me. Even if God talks, you can't design God's voice. Because you are not used to it. And so then you have to buy 1,001 way to pray in order to get a wife. And that person that has written that book wants to sell his book and make money. Because if he's a new person, why will he have to write a book 1,001 way to know God's will about to marry? Because I can bet it by the time you have prayed that 1,001 way, you will still, still hear, yet hear God. <laughs> Praise God. As my father has sent me, he will so send I, send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whosoever sins he remitted. That is the primary task of us believers. To remit sin. 
not to get entangled with sin. And I'm going to make an altar call tonight for people who may have gone away from the way to reconsider their way because the way of God is glorious. It's not grievous. But you that he has asked to go remit sin and you are not only and you are playing with sin, it can match. And whosoever sin you retain, they are retained. I've given you the authority to destroy the power of sin. Because whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Because he sinned, he sinned, and he cannot sin. Because it is who sinned you bear that you represent. Second Corinthians chapter 5. As I bring to as I begin to bring my message to a close so that we can have ample time to pray. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Now read verse 18 to 20. And all things of God who are to reconcile us to himself by Jesus Christ. And all things are of God. Who are to reconcile us to himself by Jesus Christ and are given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and are committed unto us the what? The word of reconciliation. God, Paul said, God committed into your hand, into my hand. What? The word of reconciliation. That's what we are hearing and what we are hearing. To reconcile men back to God. So that the God can be reconciled. That's why you have to get into the ministry of reconciliation. Because you have the word of reconciliation. No government can reconcile all that is happening in this world. It will get, it will begin to get. Because, you know. They are doing research, research, research upon economics. You know, and, and economics is social science. It's not science. So in humanity and in social science, there is no QED. <laughs> Praise God. Because me, I could do research. I tell you, this is the way to do it. The other man could do research and say, this is the way to do it. Are you going to some economics? Rose up. Professor Alukov, good memory. And erudite in economics. He said we must not take war bank loan. Um, uh, Dr. Oko, what is his name? Dori Babangida. As his, no, not Oko to a while. This time too was from World Bank. He came and advised him and father A that it is good to take war bank loan. Both of them, economists of the highest order, father A went to Imperial College, University of London. I don't know. I think Baba Lukotu went to University of London. You know what I'm But diversify way of thinking. When we tell you that after all, the loan is there for us, let's just spend it wisely. I mean, the interest rate is not much, you know. If you don't take it, somebody else will take it. We can't develop except we take this loan. Some people will say, no, don't take loan. That's, and they, they are both right. <laughs> are you what I'm That's education. They have read, they have written their thesis, fantastic thesis, signed and sealed, handing them good PhD, not you know, because PA2 has grade, upper PAG. What am I saying? A wisdom cannot solve it. People that are Nobel laureate, they can't keep their family. <laughs> Do you understand? They can't keep a family. 
They are good erudite scholars. But they can't keep a family. So, and if a family is not kept, you can't reconcile the world. Because the family is the picture of the entire world. And so if you lose your family, we lose the entire world. So it is you and I that through the message of the gospel can reconcile the world. It is because our creator is the one that created all human beings. And he knew the best thing for us. Grown up, the idea I have about is a marriage is that as a man, your wife has no right to ask you where you are going. Praise God. I learned it from my father. I learned it from my brother who had married. They can go for two days. Their wife, dear no. And so I got converted. And so when I got converted, the church will send me on an errand. I will go. And my wife will say, Ah, you didn't tell me. I say, Rubbish. Christian? Yes, Christian. Born again? Born again. Holy Ghost feel? Holy Ghost feel. I will even put spiritual word. I say, You are supposed to be an intercessor. You are supposed to be praying. Why are you worried? Praise God. But as I heard the word of God, it began to shape me. It began to turn me around. I don't understand. I remember Dr. S.T. Allah, a day of memory, tourist and Mesper Baptist Church. The man said the day he invited his father to his house, and the father saw that when the wife finished preparing food, they were eating together. The man went inside the room, and when he came, to his father, he said, oh, 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 my book, we get, oh, hola. Ah. <laughs> ah. Hey, oh, my book, we get, oh. Because the work, can, I'm driving at the position and the place that God has given us. It's a great prime place that we need to train ourselves. We need to intercede to occupy that place every time if you are to see a better world. Because with all the intellect, with all the knowledge in the world, they don't have, they can't reconcile the world. It's a broken world. They will continue in that same mode. So God has given us the word of reconciliation, both to wit, reconciling men back to God in Christ Jesus. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And we are to be the ambassador for his kingdom. In order to reconcile the world unto God. Because God was in Christ and Christ is in us. But to do that, we need boldness. We need courage. We need inner strength to do that. And except the Holy Ghost makes you bold, you'll be intimidated wherever you go. Because the world operates by what? By intimidation. I went to high court one day just to sign a document and somebody brought me before the judge, and so when I got to her uh, office, I just sat down. Ah, and the woman just looked me from head to toe like that. Ah, and so the person that brought me came and said, ah, please come, come, come. Ah, so he, he brought me out. Ah, he said, she said, judge, and say, and so what? <laughs> that uh, you just sent her into your office and you just sat down. And I said, I said, what? Ah, he said, no. You don't know what a judge is? I say, who is a judge? Ah, he said, judge has power over life and death. That when they enter their court and they put on the red robe, that means they want to send somebody to death. 
So I should allow her. I say, allow. I said, then why did you bring me to our office? Praise God. But that's right. Because she's in an official position. I didn't know by ignorance. <laughs> you understand? I didn't know by ignorance. When you enter before a judge, you must wait until the judge says, sit down. So, but I told the person, I said, I don't need to meet any judge because I won't have a case. <laughs> Praise God. Because, yes, I won't. If God has given me the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling men back to God, what will bring me now that I will breach a position of reconciling and I will have to, that's why the Bible is talking. I, I pray that God will give us understanding. Amen. He said, don't you know who you are in Christ? You bring yourself before a judge. And a Muslim judge is telling Christian elders that I think you are a church. Why don't you say go and settle your quarrel at home? That's an insult to the blood that the Lord Jesus Christ shed to purchase his church. But some of this thing has come to us so much that it has become the normal way of and the brother is saying we will meet in court. Ah. Whatever we can say to you. Gently let the man have it. Praise God. Let the man do what? Let him have it. I'm in the secular world. I'm a market person. But you can't hold me any money and I'll fight you. Praise God. If it's going to be a shouting order, I'll release it to you. Because why? I have a God that will take out that money. You will come crying to me, begging that please have your money when my God take over. Pastor, you don't mean I want to buy it a month of 5 million, 50 million. What is money that has an amount? May God transform you tonight in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray and I'm trusting, I'm believing that many of us will still scratch our body to spend money because of economy. It's not of God. Am I saying that everybody will be rich stinkingly? That's not what I'm saying, please. Because I don't know how industrious you are. I don't know how effective you are. I don't know how humble you are. But we are here that you may be touched tonight to fit in into those model. Because when you operate God's kingdom principle, you will see kingdom results. And so we suppose to go reconcile the people of the world. To align them to the plumb line of God for their life. And it's my prayer that God will open your eyes to see in the name of Jesus. That as a missionary, that you have gone to that field, is to lift up the people Because there are two forces operating in this world. I don't know whether you notice what I used to notice. When I drive past Mako going to Malete, in this local area, there's one Cook Memorial Baptist Church. It's on the left. It's a small church. I don't know whether anybody has noticed it. Praise God. That church has been the way it is until now. Okay. But I normally pray every time I pass that through. And the same thing applies to the mission field. It's a gravitational pull. When you get to their midst, they are down. If care is not taken, they are pulling you down. If 
you don't have the spiritual strength and energy to pull them up, you are going to come to their level. And then you become a pastor that when you wake up in the morning, you are always tired of her. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. There was one, I went to one of our mission fields some times ago. <coughs> and when we got there, one of us wanted to take his bath. And so near a pathway, they just put cloth around and put pail and water. And he just entered. I said to do what he said to Bab. I said, sir, no, you can't Bab. I called a missionary. I said, this thing must not happen again. You are here. On a footpath. A young girl. With a too robust energy in her front chest. Is buffing. And a young man is passing. And he looked like this. There's nothing you teach that man. Something has been put in his heart. I say, what does it take to go buy galvanized thing and make a good bedroom and good toilet? So that you may begin to teach these people how to live. They don't know. But we know. And so there's always anybody you meet, anybody you interact with, in your interpersonal relationship, there is a spiritual energy going through both of you. If you are not sensitive, if that person is down, he will pull you down. May you never be pulled down in Jesus' name. Amen. Because the ministry is to reconcile men back to God. And that's my prayer tonight. Because I'll be praying soon that ideas, initiative, wisdom, ability will come upon your life to represent God and his kingdom and to represent the kingdom of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. And so when the pastor begins to tire up early in the morning, you wake up, say, I don't do quiet time, and you are walking about. <laughs> I mean, there are more things to do in life. There are more land to conquer for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I believe that as you have come to this meeting, as you begin to go, we go in the strength of his might and the might of his power in the name of Jesus. And your life shall never be the same again. Look, let me tell you this. The world is locked in what is called rat race. It's a rat race. Dog eats dog. And unfortunately, sometimes, believers get involved in it. Instead for the life to learn from us, we get involved. And at the end of a rat race, it's a rat that win. And I'm not a rat. I'm a child of the living God. And so I can't run a rat race. And you can't run a rat race. Because you can't beat them in their game. There's no rule in their game. That's why the Bible says we wrestle. We wrestle. There's a difference between wrestling and boxing. In boxing, you have rules. You can't hit below the belt. If you hit below the belt, you are disqualified. But in wrestling, have you ever watched a wrestling? You will see the man. He will throw him. He will carry. There's no rule. And that's why the, you know, every word of the Bible is accurate. We raise you. They don't they want to pull you down. There's no rule when it comes to rat race. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, you have rule. You have guideline. When you follow it, you will get what God wants for you. 
And I pray that the power of God will be made real in your life this night in Jesus' name. Having said all I've said, what I'm driving at tonight is God will give you a new heart and a new spirit in the name of Jesus. And Moses called the 12 elders and they said they should go look at the land. Two of them, and it was recorded about Caleb that he had a new spirit. You will have a new spirit. You will see things from other perception, God's perception, divine perception, in the name of Jesus. And your life shall never remain the same again. Let's bow down to pray. Why don't you tell it to God? Pray, trusted God, that anyone under my voice this night, either physically or virtually, will never remain the same again. And that's why I'm trusting and believing. As I shortly will be praying, and you'll be praying along with me. But the first thing I will have to do, you know you have gone outside the kingdom principle you know that you have missed it I would want to, you to come forward so that we can reconcile back to God so that you can be effective reconciler so if you're there you know that you want to come back to God why don't you do that quickly Okay, if that is taken care of, I want to pray for people who have lost their inner peace. You have lost your inner peace. You are disquiet within. Because of the tough situation, you can't enjoy the peace of God again. Just raise your hand up quickly and I'll be praying in a short moment. Father, I just want to thank you for your children and just pray that the power of God will flow forth into their inner man every anxiety every worry that has any demonic hold I come in the name of Jesus against that hold I pull it out in your life in the name of Jesus I release the kingdom of God into your life let the peace of God work mightily in your life thank you everlasting father blessed be your holy name Jesus mighty name I pray now I want to pray for healing you can't go out here without any ailment because you are going to serve the living, the true, and the only God, the possessor of heaven and earth, the creator of heaven and earth, the God of the spirit of all flesh. If you have an issue, cancer, headache, joint pain, raise up your hand, wherever you may be. Can you just stand up? Please. Ha ha ha. Yes, Lord. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you worship. Because of that which you allow your son Jesus Christ to do on our behalf. And he went through an agonizing and demonizing issue striped laid at his back tearing into his flesh and like a dumb plum without uttering a word 
just that you may affirm and confirm that which you have assured us that I am the Lord that he led thee. And Jesus bore the pains and the anguish. And so, Lord, I'm invoking the power that was released as ripe I've laid at his back that there'll be a creative miracle. There'll be a power to heal in the life of your children in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, it's by your power. And I stand to be your true witness. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Be made all in the name of Jesus. Be made all in the name of Jesus. Be made all in the name of Jesus. Please, if I've not touched you, please come, quickly come to the front. So that if I've not touched you, quickly come to the front. The Lord will make you whole. Yes, I have that assurance before I come to represent him here. Le mo sim brekete le makata. Ma sim brekete le po prayekete. Receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Be healed 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 in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing by faith in Jesus' name. I break every hole of sickness in your life in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Every power of darkness that I gathered up against your head is broken. It's broken. It's broken. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Masim Brekete. Yes. 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 All over you. All over you. Everything that is not of God disappear. 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 Because the word of God has assured that every tree that God has not planted, they shall be honed down right now, right now. Let the divine touch of God come upon your life in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Yes. It's not for time for you to die. You will live to declare the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God make you whole in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. In Jesus' name, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus, I release the power of God upon your life. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Masim Brekete Motata. Yes. Yes. Every demonic will break in your life. Break in your life. Break in your life. Break in your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be made whole. Be made whole. Le remo simbraka. Yes. Let there be newness of life. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Everything that causes pain, I cause them right from the soul. Pack your load out in the name of Jesus. That the healing power of God will flow upon your life. In the name of Jesus. You are made whole. In the name of Jesus, you are made whole. In the name of Jesus, you are made whole. In the name of Jesus, you are made whole. In the name of Jesus, you are made whole. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Le mosim breke. Le pokata. Ya yakete le mosim braka. A new heart, a new heart, a new heart. Every damage to your heart be made whole now. Let there be divine surgery to give you a new heart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are made whole in Jesus' name. 
You are made whole in the name of Jesus. You are made whole in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, the power of God come upon your life. Yes, all over you. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Le remo sim brekete makata ya ya kete le mo sim braka le pakata ye kete le mo sim braka. You will wake up as a new baby tomorrow in the name of Jesus and the name of God be glorifying your life. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, Jehovah God. As you are made all in Jesus' name, you are made all in the name of Jesus. Be made all in the name of Jesus. Ma sim brekete ya pakata. Yes, 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 all over you, all over you, we release the power of God in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your holy name as it's made holds in Jesus' name. Thank you, faithful Father. Give you praise, give you thanks, give you worship, give you adoration because you are working it out. Finally, you have financial difficulty in your ministry. Yes, I just release a blessing of God upon your life. I release the wisdom of God upon your life. All will roll away in a GV. God will give you new ideas. He will give you new initiative. If your mind is dull, it will come bright. It will come alive. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will order your step to the right place. To the right place. To the right place. To the right place. We are be favored. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke foolishness. I uproot foolishness. I release the wisdom of God upon your life. You will go forth. You will possess your possession. And God's name shall be glorified in your life. Father Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. I just give you praise. I just give you worship. I just give the honor and adoration unto your holy name. Because it's not about anyone, but about you. About your son, Jesus Christ. About your kingdom. And Lord, you are honored. You are adored. You are glorified. Blessed be your holy name. And your children will come back with testimony. To the intent that you have done it, O Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. I've been asked all these things. In Jesus Christ's name and for his sake we have prayed. Amen. And a louder Amen. And a glorious Amen. Praise God. If we are doing that for Jesus, can we do it better? Can we do it better and louder?